Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So today in this video, I'm going to show you my full process filling up this page spread. So I just sketched a, uh, a vertical panorama of the sunset sky outside my window the day before. And right now I want to sketch my current read. It's Peregorio by Onoe de Balzac. It's a very famous world classic. And I love reading classical novels. Okay, so as always, I start drawing with a waterproof ink pen. Starting with the cover of the book, it's a rectangle, but since we're looking at it from the side, the shape has changed a little bit. And the first page below the cover, the thickness of the book seen from the front and the side way of the book's thickness. And now I'm drawing the textures of the pages and the spine. Now I'm starting to add the stripes and the words on the cover, the name of the book, the author. And now this is the challenging part. This is a portrait of an old man. So as you can see, I started drawing his forehead, his big nodes and eyes looking down and his cheeks and underneath his face, a lot of beard and his bald head, a lot of little broken lines and the side, his chin. Yeah, using very minimal lines to show, yeah, it's an old man. It's quite convincing. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the drawing part. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So I want to paint the old man first. So I kind of wetted his face with clear water by squeezing my water brush. So the color can spread out very easily over that area. Very first layer is the watery wash of yellow. And the pages have a very muted yellow tone. So I'm just adding that too for the pages. And now I just grab some red. When I dilute the red and mix it with the yellow, it's gonna turn into a skin color like this. And now I'm just adding this color all over his face, wet on wet. Yeah, some more red around his cheeks, his nose. And blending a little bit blue purple for the uh, shade area on his face here and there, very loosely. Grabbing some ultramarine blue and mix it with um, brown to get this very, very dark brown color, almost black to paint the background behind the old man, also in front of him. So I'm mixing even more ultramarine blue into brown. So I get a really dark bluish tone over here. It's just kind of wet on wet, so it doesn't look too flat. It's more interesting to blend on, you know, two layers or more. Just add the shadow over here underneath the cover, a pretty important aspect. Shade on this side, just a little bit and on the other side too, very watery layer of shade. And then I decided to add a nice rectangular background or little platform behind the book. So it's really up to you when you're drawing objects, you don't have to draw or paint a platform around it all the time. So sometimes I feel like to. So that's it. And now I'm just painting the shadow of the book with the leftover mix of ultramarine blue and purple. Just around the edges of the two sides and just keep it very simple and light. And the next thing I want to sketch are some rice crackers. I really like sketching plastic and other transparent containers and packages. So just spending about a minute to visualize the size and placement 
on the white space first. And now I'm ready to draw the rice cracker on the left. So it's roughly a square shape, but you can see because it's a food package, a lot of zigzag lines around the top and bottom and random curves. So it's not a perfect square. So that's the outline. And the other package of rice cracker is gonna be half inside the page and half outside the page. So this kind of composition is very dramatic. It's kind of like these two packages are like flying in or out, out of the page. So yeah, we can always intentionally put some parts of our subject matter outside the page to create a really interesting effect. And now I'm starting to add the inner details like the folds on the package. Just follow what I see, what I observe. And now drawing the round rice cracker seen through the transparent bag. And the second rice cracker underneath. Adding some more wrinkles and shines using different kinds of lines. And now I'm adding the Chinese or Japanese characters meaning snowflakes rice cracker because they're like white icings on top of these rice, rice crackers like snow and just keep adding some more textures just like these little icings on top of the cracker yeah just using very relaxing little lines to draw the texture and some more plastic folds around and underneath Okay, now I'm ready to move on to this one. The wrinkles on the edge and then the outline of this piece of cracker inside the package and the one underneath. The thickness and also the shine of the plastic package. Okay, and now I'm just writing these characters, meaning rice crackers, very quickly. Then I had to look exactly the same. And adding these little seaweed chips on the surface of the rice cracker and some more broken lines to show the shine of the plastic. Okay, and now I'm ready to paint watercolors again. So using my Hobain water brush, I'm just like wetting the areas first with clear water by squeezing it. And the first layer is always the lightest tone. Lemon yellow diluted with lots of water. This is kind of like an underpainting to show the very basic color of the rice crackers. And now I just grab a little bit orange, just a tiny bit, to add underneath. And also around on top, very loosely, wet on wet. It's like a blend of yellow and a little bit orange. Very pale colors. And now just adding the shade for the plastic using leftover colors, the mix of ultramarine blue and purple. Again, very much diluted. So most part of a uh, transparent plastic package has this diluted grayish color. And now I just mix in less water and more paint pigment. Same mixture, ultramarine blue and purple. Less water to add the darker tones of shade around the bottom of the rice crackers and on certain parts of the package as I see and leaving some little streaks of bright highlights. Same for this package, using very thin brush strokes and leaving areas of bright spots and streaks. Just a little bit more orange, yellow. And this package is more interesting because it has these little orange red stripes 
on the outside. So just using very thin brush strokes and grabbing some orange with just a little bit of water. A lot of paint pigment. This color is very strong and vibrant. And now it's just time for the final polish. So I just mix a red brown color to paint the characters for this package. Just to make that package look a bit more lively. And darken the shadows underneath the crackers. And now painting the very light shadows of these plastic packages. They usually have very, very light shadows. Yeah, just a bit more here and there and that's it. The next thing I want to sketch is my afternoon coffee. Yeah, so I just have one cup of coffee every day in the afternoon just to kind of wake up. And I just always love to draw my cup of tea or coffee. So the top, the opening is an oval shape with the uh, rim and the inside line of the coffee, the body and the handle. It's a nice and round cylinder shape, just adding a little platform so it stands on the page better. Just use broken lines to show the thickness of the handle and that shine on the side. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. I just wetted the surface of the coffee with clear water, adding a mix of yellow ochre and orange, leaving the white highlight to show the shine. And this gray tone is mixed by ultramarine blue and purple. So I did that with two layers. The second layer on top is more intense with less water and more paint pigment. Second layer, darker tone of brown for the coffee surface, just to give more contrast. And finally, the shadow. Blue mixed with purple. And that's it, nice and quick. And it's almost dark now, so and I move upstairs and I see this beautiful, vibrant stripes of colors in the sky and I will sketch it in my art journal. So when sketching sceneries, I like to start with the foreground element. So this is the tip of the rooftop of my neighbor's house. And underneath the rooftop, I have those window structures those big and small rectangular shapes, the window frames and the dark frame inside here and the blinds seen through the window, texture on the exterior. And now the, the foreground elements act as a ruler. The height of the forest is about a little bit underneath the rooftop right there in the forest line. And now just adding these very quick, um, little geometric shapes defining rooftops and the body parts of the houses. Just moving my pen really fast without judging what I have on the paper very much because the, um, the scenery in the semi-darkness is actually very blurry. It's hard to tell the exact shapes of everything. So it's kind of following my instinct. Lamps and trees and bushes, cars, very tiny. Using broken lines when I feel not so sure about the exact outline. And now just drawing the branches and twigs of the maple tree here. Overlapping on top of the forest and everything else. And another tree about the same height. And just doing these trees with solid black uh, silhouette shapes just to create a sense of um, distance and layering. Okay, and now I'm ready to paint watercolors again. The colors are fading away really fast. So now I'm just um, wetting the sky and the forest area with clear water. The stripe is a mix of yellow and orange and a bit of pink around the horizon. And pretty close to the edge of the forest is cerulean blue. And the top part of the sky is ultramarine blue. I see so many colors merging very softly together. Now for the forest is a mix of viridian green and a little bit of um, burnt sienna. And just painting these houses very lightly with leftover 
yellow and just grabbing some brown or burnt sienna to paint the rooftops using leftover gray shade add to the houses and paint the trees with leftover green yeah just let the colors blend together i know the the forest color is kind of overflowing on top i like the fuzzy effect it looks very natural and soft and this is one of the charms of watercolors we need to let go and just let the paint do the work let the paint blend together themselves to create the magical effect just quickly painting the house in the foreground with leftover colors browns and turquoise for the windows and that's it and actually i have one tiny little space left in my art journal and i move on to the other side of the house and i see this pretty very peaceful looking sunset sky in the west and it's getting dark very very soon and i had to work really fast to capture the colors so now i'm starting with a with the line work as always when i'm drawing houses i like to start with a rooftop with triangle or like trapezoid shapes lots of big and small triangles and it's the chimneys or like little prism shapes yeah drawing very quickly and also because i've been drawing this view so many times over the years i can do it very fast and the little eve over there and the window frames super quick just do the layers of structures connecting one part after another just finishing the details of the house in the middle here moving on from big to smaller shapes and this line work took me one two three four minutes to finish up so this is a speeded up version four times faster and now i'm ready to paint watercolors the speed is a little bit slower it's two times faster of the real time speed so as always, I paint the sky first, just wetted the sky with clear water so I can do the wet on wet easily of all the colors. So just put on some red orange on those areas of stripes that I see. Use thinner brush strokes for those you know, smaller stripes. Mix pink, purple and ultramarine blue together for the shade color of those clouds, wet on wet. Whoops. And cerulean blue or sky blue in between these orange red clouds. Very nice, vibrant, calming blue color. Yeah, and just let the paint do the work without over stirring. And now I see a stronger yellow orange around the horizon and now I'm adding it. Yeah, so the sky is always changing. I'm not painting the sky, you know, as it looks right now. It's a blend of past and present colors. Okay, the sky is done. And now I'm painting the rooftops. The houses right now, because it's almost dark, everything looks like silhouettes. So the rooftop, so I mix, I think I mix black into the brown. So it looks like super solid brown. And then... The exterior of the houses with leftover colors and grabbing lots of blues and greens to add on to the exteriors of these houses as I feel they have those cold shade colors and then add another layer of mix of black and brown for the rooftops because it just looks so dark final polish and that's it and here is a look of my finished art journal spread. Very loosely done, but very expressive. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you again very soon. Have a great day.